Quantum entanglement is the key ingredient behind the 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics. It was awarded for performing measurements that Einstein didn't think were possible. And the understanding that we have gained from these experiments is crucial for quantum computing today. So what was so important about this work? What did they prove? And was it worthy of a Nobel Prize? Let's discuss it. Before the advent of quantum mechanics, we thought that the world was deterministic. That is, if we knew enough information about the system beforehand, then in principle, we could determine everything about the system in the future and in the past. This was very compelling. After all, Newton's equations of motion had worked incredibly well. So why shouldn't this principle not apply to everything? Well, unfortunately for determinists, we finally stumbled across quantum mechanics. And quantum mechanics does not play well for determinism. It is by its nature probabilistic. This did not sit well with many scientists at the time, including Einstein. And proving the quantum mechanics has this nature was a crucial part of the 2022 Nobel Prize. In the early day of quantum mechanics, many things were discovered and many theories were presented. But there was a thought that what if the mechanical framework of quantum mechanics was just a facsimile of reality? and that despite making extremely good predictions, that there was a more fundamental theory to explain everything, and thus the current framework could predict nonsensical results. Well, Einstein was a firm believer that quantum mechanics was indeed incomplete. In order to demonstrate this, he, with two other authors, presented a paper in 1935 titled can quantum mechanical description of physical reality be considered complete? In this work, they outlined a thought experiment that would come to be known as the einstein podolsky rosen paradox, or EPR paradox for short. The thought experiment had to do with quantum entanglement. This is a correlated state between two quantum systems. Let's say you have two electron spins, which can either be in spin up or spin down. The entanglement of these two electrons produces an interesting state where if one of the electrons is measured to be in the spin up state, then the other must be in the spin down state. This is a result of the nature of quantum objects. Each electron can be described as a wave function. That is a different wave function for each particle. When you measure a wave function, it collapses to a single state. So by measuring, we destroy the wave function. When two particles are entangled, rather than being described by two wave functions, they're described by the same wave function. So if you measure one of the electrons, the wave function collapses for both of the particles. Now here's the crux of the thought experiment. What would happen if you took two of these entangled particles and then separated them by great distance? Let's say they were separated by several light seconds. In this state, if you could measure one of the electron states, say in spin up, then instantaneously the other electron would become spin down, which would appear to break the speed of light and therefore be forbidden. Einstein referred to this wave function collapse as spooky action at distance and suggested that there must be some hidden variables that the particles knew beforehand about what their state would be and therefore no information traveled faster than light. In essence, he suggested that before the particles were separated, they decided which one would become spin up and which one would become spin down. For many years, there was no way to tell the difference between Einstein's hidden variable theory and standard quantum mechanical entanglement. This was until 1964, when John Bell suggested that there was indeed a way to test if hidden variables were true or not. This test would come to be known as the Bell inequality test. By measuring a quantum state, we choose how we want to measure it. Before I said the electrons could be either spin up or down, but they could have just as easily been spin left or right or anything in between or a mixture. It all depends on how you measure them. John Bell said that in the scenario where you measure one electron to see if it is spin up or down, and then you measure a second electron at an angle 
between the z direction and the x direction, that there is a difference in the outcomes between hidden variables and quantum mechanics. Basically, by measuring the probability of certain outcomes, you can determine if there were any hidden variables. Now we get to the Nobel Prize. There were three people that won the 2022 Nobel Prize for Physics. John Clauser, Alan Aspeck, and Anton Zellinger, which was awarded for experiments with entangled photons, establishing the violation of Bell inequalities, and pioneering quantum information science. Performing the experiment that Bell proposed was actually quite difficult. It involved very precise measurements to be taken very quickly. And at the time, quantum computing wasn't the craze that it is now. In fact, it didn't really exist. So no one was really interested in proving Bell's theory. It seemed difficult and had no real reward. But despite this, John Clauser performed this experiment in 1972 and showed that quantum mechanics was indeed valid and that there were no hidden variables present. This was a very interesting measurement, but at the time it was mostly ignored. Then in 1982, Alan Aspect performed a more rigorous version of the Bell test, which closed certain loopholes that some people suggested would allow hidden variables to still be correct. These two main experiments won these two the Nobel Prize. Then in the 1990s, Anton Zellinger performed measurements on entangled states to demonstrate something called quantum teleportation. Basically, if you take two entangled electrons and interact one with a third electron, then the entangled state can be transferred. This concept is crucial to any form of quantum communication and as such is fundamental to much of the quantum communication research performed today. Anton Zellinger demonstrated quantum teleportation both in the lab and more recently over hundreds of kilometers. All three of these scientists performed groundbreaking research that paved the way for the second quantum revolution. Pretty deserving of a Nobel Prize, if you ask me. Every year, there are many different prizes in science. Mathematics doesn't have a Nobel Prize. Instead, it has the Fields Medal. In 2022, the Fields Medal was awarded for describing how water moves through coffee. If you want to know more, check out this video here. Thanks for watching, have fun, and see you next time.